So tell us about the app, about how it's distributed and how it's become so popular. Well, the app is it's a, it's a freeware. It's um, uh, it's available for on, uh, on iPhones, on Android, on Symbian, on Barda, and a couple of other uh, operating systems. It's also a uh, browser-based version. You can use your webcam and your and a DV cam. So the thinking of that is that everyone should be able to broadcast live video from any device, pretty much. Uh, Distribution-wise, we're thinking uh, uh, that people have their destinations online today. They have their blogs, they have their websites, they have their Facebook pages. Like, so we, we want to just make it easy for them to share their Bambooser videos directly to the platform where they have their audience already and not trying to drive that audience to Bambooser. Uh, and the popularity of growth over time have grown over time and I would say that when, where we started to get known to a public audience or a global audience was uh, in connection with the elections in, in Egypt in 2010 where 10,000 videos came out for video during one single day during the election day. This was their way of, of monitoring the elections as no international observers were around. From that it spread to, to activists and organizations all around the world, in the Middle East, uh, in Europe, in Russia, in the US, and, and uh, we hope and think that will continue. Tell us about uh, Syria and how your videos are viewed through the mainstream media and, and more broadly. Yes, Syria is a good example of how we're working. We're starting to see videos that we think are of interest and that are come from areas where not much traditional media are around. We contact the users and, and ask them how we can help. And in the case of Syria, it started for more than a year, more than a year ago. And um, the the thing they told us, as every activist says, is really help us to get distribution. And we were working actively toward every major news organization in the world. And, in February this year was the first time ever that a uh, user-generated live video was aired live on CNN, Al Jazeera, Sky, BBC, Parallel, which was a massive breakthrough. And since we established a partnership with Associated Press, uh, who uses quite a lot of, of, of Syria video to push out to the clients, and it's pretty much, pretty often the most viewed or most used content with AP customers, so it's fantastic. I, I know you're very active, um, inviting uh, activists to be involved, you know, with your platform. Um, I don't know if there, I don't mean to ask if you have a political agenda per se, but do you feel that what you're doing makes a difference? Is that important to you, or is it just you know, creating a platform. What's your thought about the technology and what it does, the impact that it's having? Well, there is no polit political agenda whatsoever, not not personal or not from a company perspective either. One of the visions with Bambus when starting it was uh, that we wanted to see Bambus being used as a tool for democratization and free speech. And and that's what's actually happening today. And we're, we're, we're more than happy to support that. Um, in terms of how we work with how we work with activists and how we deal with them is that we want to support them, we want to be on their side, and we are on their side. They know we're on their side, and I think we've built up a credibility as a brand and as individuals towards activists, knowing that they can always contact us. We're trying to help them as much as we can, and we we managed to distribute quite a lot. And just last, this Monday, this week, we again saw live video being aired on all the major TV channels in the world, uh, as it was live coming in from homes, which is fantastic. I think that's a trend that's gonna grow. Uh, the broadcast, the perspective is shifting. It's no longer the TV media that's gonna be the broadcast. It's gonna be the man in the street or the woman. Uh, and I think the big, uh, the big thing for, for media to solve here is how to create relationships with that individual in the street and ensure that that specific media company gets that specific content. One interesting thing we talked about is the importance of the contributor to be identified and yeah. credited. Some may want to be anonymous, but mostly they want to be identified. Tell us about the, the need to identify them and, and, and what the value is to them. Uh, it's of huge value to them. and, and We've been quite appalled over see, seeing how TV media has used Bambusi video footage and how they're using uh, user-generated footage, not crediting the user who's actually created it. And a very good example was one user we had in Syria 
uh, named Syria Pioneer uh, that became got, got himself quite a brand because he was broadcasting much live video that was aired on all TV channels and he 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 he. he uh, uh, he was killed uh, in a car on the way to a hospital in Homs and we helped the Syrians to create the blog post to get the message out about him and, and posting pictures of him and his children and a bit of who he was. And he was recognized by global media. I think it was over 5,000 articles written uh, about him uh, in media all over the world the day after. So recognize the user uh, and, 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 and give credit to the user who actually created this. And I think, I think uh, it's becoming better, but it's still a way to go. Very good. Well, great to see you, Hans, and thanks for coming to London for being part of this conference. Thanks for having me. An honor. Outstanding.